overburdened. What does this mean? Do you feel overburdened in your daily life? Do you have a heavy sh burden over your shoulders? A lot of people talk about this planet being overburdened with the increased population growth and the high concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. Do you know that if we continue to grow at the same rate as we do today, by 2050, we are not going to consume just one planet, we'll be consuming the equivalent of two planets. I worked 17 years for a cement, one of the largest cement companies, in the area of sustainability. I developed, among others, a biodiversity strategy for the group. Now, the growth or overburden in our industry and in the mining industry means something completely different. But I'll tell you about this a little bit later. The estimated growth of population will happen in emerging markets and urban area. Today, we already count 50% of the population living in urban areas. By 2050, we estimate that 70% of the population will be living in or close to a city. Guess what? That's a lot of cement and concrete. Concrete is used for bridges, roads and buildings. But let's not forget it's also used for dams, water irrigation systems or coastal protection. So do you actually know that concrete is the second most used product on earth after water? Now perhaps now you're dying to understand how do we actually make concrete and cement. So first you find a piece of land. Scrap the surface away. Take away the trees, the landscape, the agricultural land or the forest. Actually, in our industry, this is what we call overburden. Then you can start to dig out the raw material, which is limestone. Once crushed, it goes into a large horizontal oven and gets up to 1200 degrees Celsius. It requires a lot of energy. Once grinded, into a very fine grey magic powder, that's where you get the cement. The cement, mixed then with some sand and gravel, will give you the concrete if you add water to it. Now, does this sound like a sustainable business to you? Would you qualify this as a sustainable business? How do I, in my daily life, in my daily job, reconcile cement and sustainability. When green areas are taken away from the beginning on the pro of the process all the way to the end of the process. Well, I suggest that we look again at this cement production process, but when we are taking care of nature right from the start. When you select this new piece of land, which will be your new quarry, why not choose one where biodiversity is less sensitive? Make sure that you go out to areas that are not too biodiversity rich. Some quarries are actually now very famous nature parks. Take Little Paxton in the UK. It's a bird watcher's paradise. In Spain, there's a quarry called El Puente, not too far from Madrid, where there's a biodiversity haven, and around it, they're still actually extracting material. In Belgium, I had the opportunity to visit a quarry that was untouched by humans for 80 years. And guess what? The nature has reconquered the space, and it's bright green with a lot of biodiversity. In Australia, we even had a case where a species which was thought to be extinct, we actually found that in our quarry. The scientist wanted to give it the name of our group. I even convinced some conservationists that if we would rehabilitate and restore more quarries, we would create or at least protect much more biodiversity. Now let's go to the kiln, this large horizontal oven that goes up to 1200 degrees Celsius. 
Traditionally, the cement companies burned a lot of fossil fuels, like coal, to get to these temperatures. But over the years, we've learned to co-process waste materials to replace the non-renewable energy sources. By actually burning waste materials from other industries or municipal waste from cities, we can even then provide a service to society. The kiln eliminates the waste and avoids landfill. Now in China, they have understood this challenge and they are starting to addressing. They have built or they are building cement plants close to large growing cities and are requiring them to take these waste materials from the cities and transform them into, the pro into cement products. Do you know of a city in China called Chongqing? It's not that far from the Three Gorges Dam. 30 million people live there, but it has grown from almost nothing to this size in less than 20 years. Well, again, that's a lot of cement and concrete. But if you do some waste management and cement co-processing with the waste material, then you are solving one of the sustainability issues. As you can see, the cement industry has developed a lot of activities, but it's only a very small piece in the larger puzzle of building a sustainable future. A future with less overburden. And my question to you, or a few thoughts I would like to leave you with, because I give you the example of what one company is doing, is how you would do it. But I'd like to use another example, which is the cement, once it's grinded, it's actually a product that gets mostly transported onto trucks. Why not select a mode of transportation that's less polluting, such as waterways or railways? It is actually based on these two criteria that our company in the UK got awarded the supply of concrete for the London Olympics in 2012. London wants to have green Olympics. So we offered them a solution where we would use low CO2 cement, which means that we would use materials from other industries, waste from the steel and the power industry. Then the products, sand and gravel and cement, would be transported as much as possible by barge and rail cars. And the concrete, we also made use of the material on site. All the old buildings could be crushed and the demolition waste could be used as aggregates for the new buildings, the ones that the athletes will use in the future. So as you can see, the customers start to value the greener production of cement and concrete. And we hope that will be more of them. But as I said previously, this is only a small piece of a larger puzzle to build a more sustainable future, to build a future with less overburden, to build a future in 2050 where 9 billion people live well within the limit of one planet. So I'd like you to leave with a food for thought. How are you going to contribute to a more sustainable future? How will you ensure that we all collectively reduce this overburden and limit our consumption to one planet? How are you going to pave the way into a more sustainable future?